so today I'm gonna talk about the famous humpback whales. So humpback whales are one of the most watched and well-studied species of whale. Found in every ocean and many near shore area are associated with coastal and marine tourism. The species is known for its spectacular uh, surface active behavior, which can include breaching, leaping clear off the water, and flippers and tail slapping. A humpback whale blur or the splash of a bridge can be seen from a distance of several kilometers, making the humpback whale one of the most conspicuous targets of whale watching all around the world. At close range, the species is unlikely to be confused with any other due to some distinctive characteristics. We're gonna see it right now. So humpback whales are one of the most largest species of baleen whales, reaching lengths up to 16 to 17 meters and weighing around 30 to 40 uh, tons. They have a robust and streamlined uh, body with a large head and a distinct hump in front of their dorsal fin, uh, that, uh, which give them their name. Humpback whales possess long and wide pectoral fin uh, that can reach one third of their body length. The fin have a unique shape, often described as flippers, with bumps or knobs along the leading edge. Their tail is broad and, neatly, and deeply notched with a width of around one third of their body length too. The underside of their tail is often marked with distinctive pattern, which, uh, which help researchers uh, identify individuals. Humpback whales have a dorsal fin on their back locati located near the midpoint of their body and the dorsal fin varies in shape and size but it's relatively small compared to their body size. The body of humpback whales is uh, pre predominantly sorry, uh, black or dark grey with variable patterns of white on the ventral side and flippers. And these patterns uh, are unique to each individual too, so it can uh, be used for identifications too. Uh, humpback whales have protuberances called tubercles on their head and lower jaw. Uh, these tubercles contain hair follicles and are thought to enhance the whale's hydrodynamics um, in the water. They have a lifespan of approximately 45 to 100 years and females generally are living longer than males. So regarding the feeding, uh, unpacked uh, whales are baleen whales, which means they filter their food uh, through baleen plates. They strain creels, anchovies, cod, sardines, mackerel, capulin and other kind of small fishes from the waters. And some humpback whales have been observed creating bubble nets to catch their prey. The whales dive deep, then swim up in a spiral pattern while releasing a, st um, a steady stream of bubble from their blowhole. At the bubble right, they form a net that surrounds the whale's prey. Uh, the whales swim up through the center of the bubble net and feed on the prey trap inside. Humpback whales need to be fed intensively through the summer and autumn season as they generally fasting during immigration and on the breeding grounds and rely on their uh, reserves for energy during those months. Almost every non-population of unpack whales perform long seasonal migration, spending summers feeding in cold productive water at high latitude and winters on tropical breeding grounds where the mates uh, calve and nurse their young. Some individuals travel as far as 8,000 kilometers between their breeding and feeding grounds. Humpback whales mate primarily on their breeding grounds in the tropic in the winter months. A pregnant female swims thousands of kilometers to polar feeding grounds to gain sufficient strength uh, and body mass for successful births and lactation by feeding intensively for several months. Then she returned to the breeding grounds to give birth after a period of gestation, uh, yeah, of, uh, gestation period uh, of approximately 11.5 or 12 months. 
Mother and calves generally remain in shallow sheltered water where the calf nurses and gains the weight and strength required to migrate back to the feeding grounds. Males on the breeding ground engage in aggressive competitive behavior to gain access to females and also produce long complex songs at this period. So male, uh, especially during the mating season, uh, as we just talked about, are particularly vocal. From the east coast of Australia to French Polynesia, via the breeding grounds of Ecuador, uh, with a total distance of over 14,000 kilometers, these large mammals love to be heard. Each population has a slightly different chorus of vocalization, which it strings together in a unique way. These multiple repetitive phrase, phrases are called themes, and each whale song has several of them. Then, from time to time, the males will replace all the themes with new ones with, uh, without us really knowing why. However, as scientists have revealed in a new study published, um, that they published that the song sung by uh, the whales on the west coast of Australia were subsequently sung by people on the east coast. Years later, the same song were sung off the coast of French Polynesia, around 6,000 kilometers from the west coast of Australia. And also, songs heard in French Polynesia can migrate, migrate sorry, um, across the Pacific Ocean to reach uh, South American coast, coast, so more than 8,000 kilometers further east. Researchers uh, believe that whale songs are transmitted from one population to another throughout the world in stages. The song revolution begins in one population, then, in summer, this population migrates to find food, passing it on uh, to a neighboring population, and so on. For the moment, scientists do not know whether whale songs can migrate across the Indian Ocean to return to the Australian coast, but according to some studies, pre pre preliminary results of the coast of Brazil and South Africa suggest that the songs could well make a complex a complete tour of the planet. That is fantastic. Thank you.